that he speaks for each of us. May she rest in peace and God save the King. Yeah. Craig Whitton. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And I rise on behalf of my constituents uh, of the Calder Valley to thank Her Majesty for her lifetime of service to us, her peoples, and to her country, the Commonwealth, and territories for all the very, very many reasons that have been mentioned here by colleagues over the last two days. Madam Deputy Speaker, I won't repeat them all again, uh, but instead reflect on my own wonderful experiences of meeting Her Majesty the Queen. Now, I'm what I would call a true working class lad. We emigrated to Australia when I was five. I'm the son of a boilermaker and a seamstress. We were 10 pound poms who emigrated to the once great steel and shipbuilding towns and cities of Australia. Now, my first experience of actually seeing the Queen in person, in real life, I remember was back in the late 1970s. I was just age 15. I know you're, you're aghast that, I'm, uh, that it, uh, I was... Uh, <laughs> uh, but watching in awe uh, uh, at the Royal Yacht Britannia, bringing Her Majesty the Queen and Prince Philip to meet the then Australian Prime Minister, uh, Malcolm Fraser. What a magnificent sight it was, and the amount of people that turned up to greet them. And never once then did I ever in my life imagine that I would be Her Majesty's Vice Chamberlain <laughs> and having audiences with her at Buckingham Palace on one to one. Now, just slightly and briefly back to my working class roots. Now, my mum, when I left school, was horrified, absolutely horrified, that I left school to work in an office. She often asked why I didn't get a proper job like my dad and my brother, who also had a trade. Such was the harshness of my background. Although, I will say, I wouldn't change it for anything. Yeah. Now, this badgering from my mum has gone on my whole life, <laughs> uh, where even when I became an MP in this place, in devilment, she would say to me, so just remind me, what exactly is it you do? <laughs> <laughs> um, so a few years ago, when my mum was in the late 70s, she came back here to the UK from Australia for a holiday at around the same time as the state opening of Parliament. So not telling her a thing, I brought her here to London for a visit. I got her a seat in the House of Lords Gallery, overlooking uh, the Queen, straight in front of the Queen. And then, for good measure, I got her sat in the special seat over there, here on the floor of the House, courtesy of Mr Speaker's predecessor. Now, Madam Deputy Speaker, no one ever has ever seen my mother speechless in her life. <laughs> but I can tell you she was. And what I can also tell you is that she has never once since say to me, so tell me, what is it you actually do? <laughs> now that, though, was the power and the respect of Her Majesty uh, gained from every generation of Britons, my good old mum included. And I will take to my dying day the ease, the compassion, and the love I felt for my Queen, our Queen, as her vice Chamberlain. Her interest and knowledge of the Calder Valley, or any subject we discussed, was flawless. May you rest in peace, Your Majesty. You have more than deserved and earned your peace. God save the Queen, and God save the King. Yeah. Yeah. Stephanie Peacock. Yeah. Madam Deputy Speaker, it is